Android Studio is the officially supported IDE from Google for creating Android applications. Before we create a new Android Studio project, let's take a look at two important details of Android Studio. The first we'll find on the Configure page. Here we're interested in the SDK Manager. This is a separate application that you use to manage the installation of various build tools and APIs for Android. By default, most of the tools and APIs you see here will not be installed. Instead, Android Studio will prompt you to install them as you need them throughout your development process. Now, I'll be frank, I don't like to be bothered to install new tools when I'm developing, so I went ahead and downloaded and installed all of the available tools and APIs before creating a project in Android Studio. Let's go ahead and close the SDK Manager. Now we'll head to the Project Defaults and select Project Structure. This particular setting is important because it lets you specify the location of the Android SDK and Java Development Kit, or JDK. These two fields will be filled in by default by Android Studio when you install it. It is possible, however, that you may need to update your JDK. On my system, a clean install of Mac OS X Yosemite, I had to head to Oracle's website to download the latest JDK, version 8. You might not have to do this on your system. Know that it is an option should you be prompted to use a higher version of the JDK. Let's head back to the Quick Start page and choose to start a new Android Studio project. On the New Project page, I'll give my application the name Hello PD. I'll leave the company domain as it is. Finally, I'll choose to save this project within the Learning Live PD folder located on the desktop. On the next page, I'm asked to select the form factors for my app. We'll leave the phone and tablet option selected. From the drop-down, I can choose what flavor of Android I want to develop for. I'll leave it on API 15 Ice Cream Sandwich. The next page takes us to the Activity Page Selection window. There are lots of choices here for different styles of application screens. Here, we'll leave Blank Activity selected. The last screen I'm taken to is a screen that allows me to customize the selected activity. I'll leave all of this alone and then choose Finish. This will initialize Android Studio with the selected settings and know that it might take a few moments for Android Studio to build its window. By default, you'll be presented with the tip of the day when you start or open a new project in Android Studio. I'll choose to close this window and wait for my project to finish loading. Likely, when you create a new project, you'll see a note about a rendering problem in the activity underscore main dot XML window that's open and showing a sample device. We'll get to that problem in just a moment. Before we do, I do want to point out to you that you can find the Android SDK Manager under Tools, Android, and you can find the Project Structure settings under File, Project Structure. Both of these settings are pretty important, so it's good to know where to find them once you've started your project. Let's take a moment to fix the rendering error that we're getting within activity underscore main dot XML and in the design tab, we'll click on the app theme icon. This brings up a window that will let us choose a visual theme for our application. I'll choose the hollow light theme and then select OK. We'll make sure the project panel is open at the left. Finally, to build and run our application, we'll select the play button at the top of the workspace. This will prompt the Gradle build system to start building our application, and you'll see a message at the very bottom of the window indicating that. Once built, we'll be prompted to choose a device on which the app will run. I've already set up a virtual Nexus 5 running Android Lollipop, so I'll choose OK. When ready, a separate window containing the chosen Android emulator will appear. The device will boot up and then take you to the initial screen. Eventually, the app will load onto the device. Once it's loaded, the build and run process is complete and we can use the app within the emulator. Now that we've successfully created, built, and ran an app, we can move on to importing PD for Android into our project within Android Studio.